interrogating them or trying to intrude into their personal lives. So they feel okay and calm with you. So, um, yeah. Okay, so, um, okay, go ahead. Can you, can you hear me? Can you yes, hear me? I can hear you, Mark. Oh, okay. I mean, it's quite noisy here, but I hope um, it doesn't distract uh, uh, the session. Uh, yeah, so basically what we are doing is uh, Amaka would be uh, asking me uh, some questions. So, of course, it's just a mock session. And um, uh, I am going to, you know, uh, be the user, right, uh, right here. So uh, she's going to be throwing in some questions. I'm going to be responding to those questions and um, would, would also give you, um, uh, yeah, probably what we think based on our experience. Uh, you know, personally for me, I would say, uh, I've been, uh, you know, interviewing uh, customers. I've been, I've been, uh, you know, part of uh, a lot of uh, interview sessions as well. Uh, my daily role also as a solutions architect, I get to uh, communicate to a lot of people. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, uh, from from multiple countries, you know, with multiple, uh, you know, uh, background and culture. So I think uh, I've actually been in uh, meetings and sessions uh, with different people, uh, you know, uh, with different type of uh, you know, uh, um, communication uh, patterns. So I think uh, that should uh, at least help us uh, to understand how people would uh, tend to communicate or even respond to you. And um, yeah, so just try as much as possible, ask your questions. Uh, what we'll do is uh, at the end of every question, we would also give some scenarios, uh, you know, based on uh, the fact that we've used this uh, pattern uh, on so many people, right? We would also give you, um, uh, some scenarios, you know, let's assume you're, you're talking to someone who happens to be um, very professional and, uh, you know, wants to stay professional on the conversation, or you are probably engaging with uh, someone who loves to be uh, open-minded and, uh, you know, uh, who, who, likes to, who likes to have fun during conversations. Uh, we we'll would also give you some, um, you know, advice on how to approach those uh, kind of people. So, yeah, Amaka, I think we, we are good to go. Um, I also believe that uh, we all have um, uh, a link to this kind of questions, especially the UI, UX, and the PM guys on the call. Uh, yeah, because I, sh I shared that with you, uh, I think, on multiple occasions. So, uh, Amaka, I think, uh, how many people do we have on this call right now? Um, okay, we currently have 38 people on the call. Okay, okay. So, I think we're good to go. We're good to go. So, um, yeah, go ahead, please. Okay, all right. So before you start interviewing anybody, you have to ask for their permissions. So we have to ask, like now I'll say, Mav, this call is being recorded. Are you okay with the call being recorded or not? Yeah, um, yeah. So I am okay with the call being recorded. I don't have any problems with that at all. All right, okay. So that's fine then. So I can record the call. So my yes. first question. Turn to so, you. So, so, so sorry, before you proceed, I think I would also like to um, uh, throw more light on that part. So the reason why you need to ask is because uh, some people um, find it very, I mean, they, 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 don't, they don't take it lightly when you record their conversations, right? So it's always good that you inform them. And uh, if they don't permit you to record the call, then you have to pick up your pen and uh, your paper or your notes because uh, don't assume that you remember every single thing that uh, you know the the uh, person has uh, you know told you. So just ensure you take like a pen and uh, a note and uh, summarize what the person is saying. You might not take every single detail, but just try to summarize the important details. Okay, and uh, it is important because that is what the uh, UX guys will be working with, and also uh, you interviewing them. If if you are uh, one of the PM folks or you are uh, also uh, in the UX um, uh, department. Uh, definitely, uh, those, that, that feedback is very important, right? You, you don't want to come back uh, empty-handed and uh, try to make assumptions based on what you can remember. So just make sure you are taking notes. All right, sorry for that, Amaka, please uh, continue. Okay, all right, yeah, no problem. So um, tell me about your role at work. All right, so uh, basically, basically I'm a solutions uh, architect. So what I do is, um, you know, I get to communicate with uh, multiple uh, teams and I get to communicate with uh, external clients most of the time. Uh, so my, my company actually outsource 
uh, the solutions architects to render solutions uh, engineering and uh, you know uh, advices to um, other companies, uh, mostly startups in my own uh, case. Um, so basically, I discuss with those clients and we get to uh, you know design and uh, build solutions uh, for their existing business problems or you know uh, the new business problem they are trying to solve. Yeah. Okay, all right, noted. So my next question to you will be, tell me about the team you work with. What's uh, the routine well, like? Yeah, so um, basically I, I work with diverse teams, right? You know, some days I uh, get to work with uh, design teams. Some other days I get to work with engineering teams. Uh, you know, when building uh, a project, there are multiple phases to, um, delivering on that, uh, you know, on, on the complete project, uh, uh, at least on the, on the complete MVP, you know, in my own uh, uh, use case here. So uh, basically, um, I work with multiple teams to ensure that, uh, you know, we deliver on those solutions. And uh, when working with an engineering team, uh, which I would say is like 60% uh, what I do, uh, or 70% what I do most of the time, uh, I get to work with people who are engineers, you know, cloud engineers as well, uh, software and mobile application developers. Um, yeah, so uh, what I do on such teams is I just, you know, focus on designing the architecture, uh, especially the cloud architecture, and I allow them, uh, you know, focus on the, uh, the low level uh, detail. Yeah, so that is basically what I, what I, what I do uh, with the team. Okay, so what would you describe a typical day at work for you since you tend to work across different teams or you tend to work with different teams each day? Uh, okay, so a, a typical day for me, you know, um, would, um, uh, you know, at jumping from one meeting to the other, right, I, I tend to have a lot of meetings, like really a lot of meetings, you know, sometimes I can actually have up to 10 meetings uh, and um, I need to, you know, juggle between those meetings to also deliver on some engineering uh, tasks, right? Because um, uh, we have the PM guys, you know, in some of these teams distribute tasks to my desk. Uh, I have to discuss with the clients, uh, discuss with their engineers, you know, and also um, try to implement some architecture, uh, architectural uh, uh, diagrams, uh, and also ensure that I work on the cost optimization for the client. So, yeah, I think my typical day is basically very stressful. Right, uh, but at the same time, I, I love I love what I do, so I really have fun, uh, you know, doing the work. Okay, all right. So um, so this is the first phase for getting to know questions. Yeah. So I, I think maybe we can also yeah. So basically, uh, looking at the way I responded to these questions, you know, what uh, what I've done is um, you know try to make it comfortable for both parties. Right. It's straight to the point. You know, I just give the response. Uh, and um, that is all uh, that uh, you know the interviewer needs. But in some other scenarios, um, you might get to uh, meet with uh, people that uh, happen to have fun. You know, they love to take the conversation to a whole new level. Try as much as possible not to be carried away. So, for example, I would say, uh, Amaka, maybe you can ask me uh, the second question again. Okay, tell me about the team you work with. Yeah. So. Um, now, this is a different way I would uh, answer this question based on, you know, some of the uh, people I've interviewed, how they would, you know, approach this. Um, okay, so uh, regarding the team I work with, it's, uh, it's quite confidential. So I, I don't want to really go into the details of my work on this call, uh, but basically I can just give you a brief overview, right? So my team is in charge of uh, ABC, uh, the company, and uh, there are so many details in there that I would love to go into. Uh, but I tend to also do some extra work uh, outside. I work with some private agencies and, um, you know, I get to work with uh, media teams. And uh, what we do basically is we create campaigns and, uh, you know, we publish these campaigns to several uh, social media platforms. And, um, yeah, we, we, just, we just sit and watch and, uh, you know, get feedback from uh, the executive team. So how about you, Amaka? Um, do you mind telling me what to do at work as well? Now, you see... Uh, this is someone trying to have uh, more conversations with you, you know, so they just, they just, they just uh, brought back the same energy and they are asking you. Now, um, some of you might say, okay, so, I mean, this session is not for uh, me. It's actually to get to know you. Um, that's, in my opinion, is wrong. 
uh, what you should do is uh, try to ensure that um, you follow up with the energy because if you don't that person might not uh, feel comfortable uh, talking to you so i'm not a communication expert and uh, you know i i definitely what i'm saying right now is based on uh, experience you know you you get to um, mirror the other person's uh, you know uh, uh, behavior during during the during the call uh, but you don't have to be too extreme so uh, the fact that the person is uh, sounding um, very uh, uh, masculine or feminine does, does, does not mean you have to come down to act that way right you don't have to be fake you just have to ensure that uh, you know you're being yourself now when the person comes back to ask you questions like you know tell me about your, your own self tell me about your typical day at work you can just say uh, well um, you know i am actually a researcher and uh, don't don't come up with the fact that you are a designer people don't tend to understand why a designer should be interviewing them you know don't come up with the fact that you're an engineer you're actually doing uh, research which means you're a researcher uh, for the pm it's fine for you to say i'm a product manager and uh, you know basically what i do uh, for my organization is uh, you know i interview uh, customers i interview uh, potential customers and uh, you know um uh, i interview uh, customers uh, based on uh, different applications that we are trying to develop and we then try we then take this feedback and try to ensure that we build an application that would fit uh, you know the problem uh, that we are trying to solve that would fit that problem and uh, you know proper solution right to this particular problem you know ensure you make it short don't go extreme. You know, I've been in conversations where people tend to bring in their personal life and relationship, uh, you know, uh, on a conversation with a stranger. Now, uh, that is not ideal. Don't ever do that, okay? Don't ever talk about your relationship. Don't talk about your, your girlfriend or, your, or the fact that, uh, you know, you are employed and you work with your boyfriend in the same organization. You know, when people try to ask any question that is not... Um, that is not in line with what you are supposed to do here. You know, try as much as possible. Don't sound rude, but just sound, try as much as possible to, to, to decline, um, you know, answering, uh, you know, such question. Just, you, you can just, you can just, uh, you know, uh, make the person understand, oh, that's actually very personal and I wouldn't love to, you know, disclose that on the call. Uh, but when we are done with the session, um, you know, what we could do is uh, during the next session, we could actually talk more, right? During the next interview, we could actually talk more. Um, you want to ensure that uh, when turning someone down, you don't sound rude in any way, right? Because the person can actually leave the call. And I mean, the person has the right to leave the call. Um, so, and I believe when you tell the person that the call is, you, 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 want, you would like to record the call, uh, in most cases, the person will say, okay, go ahead. And then that would limit the uh, type of question that the person uh, might probably ask, all right? So this is just, to make you understand that um, there are some things you shouldn't say or, or try to say, you know, uh, during uh, sessions like this. So what we've covered right now is what we refer to as the getting to know questions. Amaka, please correct me if I'm wrong. No, you're not. Um, I think. Oh, okay. So these are the getting to know questions. We we'll try to limit it to four or even three, right? In most cases, we even go ahead to ask about the person's hobbies. Um, uh, yeah, so uh, I know that uh, that is not really relevant, and that is why Amaka skipped that. Uh, it's not relevant on this demo session, but uh, feel free ask the person about the person's uh, hobby, right? Because you 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 need this in, um, uh, or you might need this. You know, it might come in handy when uh, trying to understand the user better. Okay, so I think Amaka, we can move on to the next set of questions, right? Yes, sure, we can. Okay. So moving on, it's um. When was the last time you visited a hospital? Uh, well, I uh, I can't really uh, re uh, recall the last time I visited a hospital. I mean, I do visit the hospital on different occasions, especially uh, these days. I would say I visited the hospital for um, uh, the hospital uh, that I am registered with. Uh, you know, the, the, the software they use for their services, you know, we designed that software. So um, this was like the server, right? Uh, um, okay. So
Yeah, but, but with, regard, with regard to any medical uh, you know, treatment. You can hear me. Hello, can you hear me? Oh, okay, all right. Okay, I can hear you now. At some point, I couldn't hear you. All right, so um, next question will be, what is your biggest pain point when booking a medical appointment? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Sorry, can you come again? I said, what is your biggest pain point when booking a medical appointment? Uh, well, so I remember at some point um, when uh, th this, this was like, uh, this was like three years ago when I, um, when I, when I wanted to uh, visit a doctor at, uh, at a Gobi uh, hospital in uh, Lagos. Um, the problem we had, I was actually booking the appointment uh, not for myself, but uh, for a friend. And the problem we had was um, the platform that was recommended for booking that appointment with the hospital, with the specific hospital, uh, that particular day wasn't functional, right? Uh, we could not book the appointment. We could not uh, uh, see the list of the doctors. I can't, I don't even know if this platform is still functional to this day, but I think um, the problem we had that specific day was we could not uh, properly navigate uh, the platform. Okay, all right. That's bad though. So um, how do you currently address the pain points? Do you have to go to the hospital early so that you can see the doctor or what would you do? Yeah, so, so um, yeah, so for, for, for myself, um, for myself, there is uh, the, the hospital that I'm currently, you know, my company registered me with. Um, what I do is uh, most times I call, you know, I place a call, right? So it's like booking an appointment um, via phone call. So I place a call to the hospital. I let them know that, uh, you know, I'll be uh, uh, in the hospital within that specific uh, day and time. And then they, um, they connect me with the doctor, right? You know, so they inform the doctor, most times the head doctor. And, uh, you know, before I go down there, I can actually, sometimes I do call the doctor, right? Uh, but of course, this is my own, um, um, I think it's, uh, I'm kind of leveraging, you know, the opportunity. So I don't really use a, a booking application whatsoever. I just place a call to the, to the, uh, the doctor. And, uh, you know, when I get there, I, I, um, I have my case looked into. Yeah, all right. So that's nice. You're actually leveraging the opportunity you have. So yes. All right. So um, what do you dislike about going to the hospital? I know you don't go there except you're sick, but what do you dislike in general about going to the hospital? I think I think uh, most of uh, so my encounter with the hospital, probably I would give a, a use case uh, back in school, uh, is the fact that um, you know, the, the people in charge of uh, attending to you most times, and I think this is mostly a use case of uh, a public hospital, right? So the, the, um, the, the feedback and the, the attention that you require is uh, sometimes not, you know, given to you. Uh, you know, sometimes you just sit down there and uh, probably you have a list of patients waiting and you have some uh, nurses not really responding uh, to the patients um, or maybe the doctors are unavailable, right? So... Yeah, I think I think I, I would say on availability, right? You know, the, the nurses they are they are there, but they are not really attending to the patients, and sometimes the doctors are not available. Um, so it seems like uh, the delay, the delay uh, is kind of like the the biggest uh, uh, thing that I would say I dislike. You know, the delay, the delay is uh, is the number one thing I would say I dislike. Okay, all right. Sorry about that, but I think that seems to be a general problem. So have you tried? Okay, you spoke earlier about um, not using an app to book. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so, sorry, sorry, sorry. So you said that that seems to be a general problem, uh, but uh, uh, in the private hospital where I use currently, I don't think that's a problem there. So uh, can you please um, make me understand what you mean by being a general problem? Okay, when I say general problem, I am basically referring more to the government sectors or the government hospitals on like the private ones. Okay, okay, so um, I think, um, yeah, so that's fine. Uh, guys, so I want to contribute to that part, all right? I want to contribute to that part. To that part. When you are interviewing someone, uh, try as much as possible to avoid, um, you know, to avoid giving them decision points, right? 
So Amaka just said that seems to be a, that is kind of like a general problem. Uh, that is wrong. Don't say that. Um, don't say that because when you say that, then you are trying to uh, create a conversation around that uh, that is not uh, needed, right? Because um, some people like to counter you. I mean, I mean, naturally, a lot of people like to counter you in a decision, right? So when you say that is a general problem, they say, okay, that's not a general problem because they don't experience it in their new place. So what do you mean by you know saying it's a general problem? And then you try to explain yourself. Now you've um, you've defeated the point of uh, trying to understand uh, the user's uh, perspective. Instead, it's like you're trying to uh, make them see your perspective, uh, which I would not uh, advise. Okay. So uh, and sometimes you might be tempted to uh, to say such, uh, but please just take the feedback and appreciate the response, and then move on to the next uh, question. All right. Yeah. So, Maka, let's let's continue. Oh, okay. All right. Um, okay, so have you ever tried using, okay, you spoke about using an app to make um, an appoint, a medical appointment booking and how it was done. Can you remember the name of that particular app? Uh, I can't really remember the name of the app. I think it was, yeah, I, I feel it was their official website, right? I feel it was their official website. Um, yeah, I, I really think it was their official website, but for some reasons, uh, I mean, it has been a while. I think it's about three years now. and. I can't even remember the name of the website, uh, but I think it was kind of like a government, you know, uh, uh, government websites, you know, and uh, it wasn't functioning properly. Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, thank you. So I am currently we're done with the beginning questions. Okay, okay. So, so um, did, yeah, Amaka, if you have something to say, please continue. Uh, okay. Before I, Okay, so what I just wanted to ask was, um, as Bab has said, you don't give them a decision or make a contribution because basically you're going to have to, they would want to counter you for some people and some people might just want you to prove a point about what you have done. That's why when I say that, if you're going to have to talk to a client as much as possible, you're going to have to refrain from adding your own bias or what you think because it's more about the users than you. So let them give you the answers for your questions. You don't necessarily have to contribute to it. That's all I have to say. Um, okay, so yeah, I think I'm looking at the, before we proceed to the last uh, set of uh, questions, I'm looking at the chats and um, yeah, someone said it's always good to uh, have the session recorded. And I really advise, you know, in most cases you should ensure you, what, when you say you want to record that session, most times I would say like 80% of the time, the other party would always uh, agree with you um, because um, yeah, they understand that you know it's for uh, reference purpose, at least for the team. Uh, but sometimes some people will not you know, um, allow you, uh, you know, to record that session. So you always need to ensure that you have your notes by the side and um, you don't want to delay that session. You know, Max, I think you can take this entire question in like, I don't know, maybe 15, 20 minutes um that can be I, I don't know i think that's fine 15 20 minutes uh, but don't rush don't rush the person right if the person wants to take their time to respond you know when having conversations maybe you've seen those who um you know uh, talk slowly i will call them slow talkers um don't rush them right and when you are asking them questions don't don't rush you know i talk very fast and uh, sometimes I try to, you know, before the beginning of a session, I say, okay, marvelous, you, you have to be slow, you know, take it easy. And after a while, I just realized that I've been too fast. Um, some people are fast talkers, try to follow up with that energy. You know, that's why I said you should try to mirror uh, the person you are interviewing, but don't make it very obvious. In fact, don't make it too obvious or don't even make it obvious. Just, you know, uh, try to be yourself. But at the same time, uh, when someone is a fast talker, you don't want to come in there and say, uh, okay, sir. So, uh, how would you, um, uh, how did you uh, tackle this pain point next time? You know, that person is not going to be vibing with you on that call. Trust me, right? So, um, yeah. Sometimes I've I've also I've also seen some uh, scenarios where the person we were interviewing uh, started laughing, right? Started laughing. I mean, was laughing so hard that um, you know we we uh, had to ask him, uh, sorry, sir, but. Um, um, we understand that maybe the question was funny, 
Uh, can you tell us why you feel it was, you know, funny? We, we're not, remember this was not an interrogation, right? We just, so when the person started laughing, what you do to uh, make the other person comfortable is to also bring in that smile, you know, or a very um, uh, mild, uh, you know, laughter. You know, then you ask the person in a soft tone, uh, sir, that was funny, right? Uh, because, uh, you know, it sounded funny to me as well. And then the person can decide to, you know, explain. You know, don't try, don't say because this person is laughing out so loud, you decide to follow up with that laughter. The person might in turn ask you what is funny. And, uh, you know, it becomes a very, it becomes a dramatic, uh, you know, situation in there. So just try to make sure that you're both uh, aligned. Um, someone said, yeah, I know, but in case, uh, I know, okay, I know, but in case the person declined. Yeah, so when the person declined, ensure you use your notes. Uh, and of course, I understand what uh, Faith was trying to say there, but sometimes when the person declined, don't try to think uh, that you can remember every single thing. You can be typing if you're using your laptop. And of course, most of, uh, uh, in most scenarios, we work with our laptop. Someone said this mock example is looking so simple. Uh, interview, not they all, interview not they always to go smoothly. Uh, interviewing someone like Mark would be very good, honestly. His response is on point. Oh, thank you. Uh, that was from uh, Kazim. And uh, people said, yes, interview, interviews are not always like this. I currently work in, in marketing research. Yeah, remember that the, 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 the kind of persons you are interviewing here, uh, it's a virtual call. So sometimes uh, you are able to make, you are able to lead the conversation and the other person will follow up with your energy, right? Um, I've actually done physical interviews where I have to, I have to enter the market with my team, right? um funny enough i was on suit that day so you can imagine the stress and uh, you know uh, what I, the way i was feeling because i i did not really expect what I, what I was going to meet there until i got there right and uh i i was meeting people you know these are guys that are you know of course working in the market i was trying to engage them and they felt that uh, i was faking my voice first off right and then i had to bring in my you know um my delta accent you know, I had to bring back my Delta asset to ensure that the communication uh, was smooth. Because when people think you sound, um, when you are trying to sound funny, when, when, you try, when you sound funny because you are trying to fake your accent, people feel intimidated. Some people feel intimidated, right? And you need to also understand that some people are going to come in there with an accent to intimidate you. You know, it's, it's normal. I mean, people are like that. But uh, most of the time, when you, when you are real with yourself, you know, people will not even uh, go that direction, right? You might be interviewing some people and, uh, you know, they tend to make you feel um, that they've not really had any issue whatsoever. They don't even understand the problem, you know, that you're trying to solve. And, uh, you know, when it comes to a, a booking and the rest of them, they've, they've had a lot of smooth experience, you know, their whole life. Uh, sometimes it's true because most people don't really experience this kind of problems, right? Um, but you need to understand that uh, uh, you're going to meet different type of people. There are some people you meet, you ask them question and they'll be like, what do you mean? Can you explain well? They are not really trying to attack you. They don't just understand you. So you have to ensure that uh, you are breaking down some. So for example, Amaka asked me pain points. Do you know that there are some people that don't even understand the term pain points, right? So when they ask you, what do you mean by pain points? You know, if you, if you, the interviewer, don't even understand pain points, then it becomes, uh, <laughs> it, it, uh, it begins to look like a skit. You have to ensure that any grammar or term you are using, you can break it down. So when someone asks you, what do you mean by pain points, you make them understand, okay, what are some of the problems? You know, I've been in an interview session where uh, someone was asked, what do you mean by pain points? And he said, bottleneck. What do you mean by, I mean, someone does not understand pain points and you are using bottleneck. Right. I mean, you need to understand that you are discussing with someone who is not an engineer or a designer or a product manager. So ensure you are using, you know, terms that uh, everyone on that call can understand. So you don't get uh, questions back from the person asking you, what do you mean by this? What do you mean? What, what do you mean by that? I don't understand the question. You know, break down your questions properly. All right. So um, someone is saying, OK, my voice was breaking and you missed some vital info. Sorry about that. I will stop here for now. We'll continue with the questions when we are done. So Amaka, sorry for taking so much time. Uh, please, let's continue. All right, that was fine. Okay, so we're moving on to the next question. I said, please describe your experience with the app. So the app you used in booking your appointment that didn't work, what was the experience like? It was terrible. I mean, it was very terrible because, um, you know, we, we had to, we had to, um, that then, 
later I was at uh, I was at a place called the Solo in Lagos. Uh, so you know we had to uh, take um, I think we, we took an Uber. No, someone actually drove us down to the place, right? So we spent a whole lot of time. We got to the place and uh, uh, we had to wait for the um, the doctor that uh, was uh, in charge of handling that kind of uh, you know treatment. And we waited for a long time. You know they had to communicate with the doctor. We spent I think. We spent roughly more than five or six hours, you know, in that hospital that day, right? Um, at the end of the day, of course, I mean, it was it was so stressful because um, if we were able to uh, book that appointment, at least we would have known that the doctor would be around, you know, um, at this specific time, and then would you know move down to the place uh, uh, at that time. But um, since we could not do that, you know, we just had to drive down there and we seated, uh, you know, we were seated uh, somewhere. We just uh, sat down uh, patiently waiting for the doctor to arrive and it was very terrible it was very stressful okay all right so my next question to you will be um okay you're basically told us how so that means even navigating when you had to navigate the website it was also a terrible experience yeah yeah it was i mean the, the website uh, you know as, as uh, i would say that the website that was uh, was not uh, properly functional because sometimes clicking on you know clicking on some of the buttons like the filter button and all those stuff I remember very well because uh, you know that day I was the one uh, you know trying to um, uh, make uh, perform that booking that booking request. So uh, sorry, sorry, someone someone is not muted on this call. That's very bad. Amaka, if you find that person, please just kick the person out of the call. Okay. All right. Do you think that okay, so, okay, okay, so yeah, it was very difficult navigating that product and uh, yeah, it was really a terrible experience for me that day. Okay, sorry about that. So would you like it if an app can help you book your medical appointments so that you don't have to go through the stress you went through? Yeah, yeah, sure. I mean, why not? A functional app would, um, you know, would make it, it, it would definitely make it easier, right? It would definitely make it easier, um, you know, but... Uh, I, uh, I, I would like it if the app can actually, um, you know, have a bunch of features and uh, yeah. So just, just before I continue, this is the stage, this is, this is the kind of question where the uh, person you are interviewing will begin to, <clears throat> will begin to throw in um, a lot of, um, you know, um, uh, opinion, right? You know, on, on that app, right? Uh, sometimes the person will begin to throw in a lot of opinion on that app. Now there's one other thing we're going to get to. when. We we are done with this question we're going to talk about two things first of all how you should address these people and secondly something we refer to as the why question you know the why question is very important i told amaka not to uh, bring it up when asking the initial set of questions because i would want to explain to you first and tell you how you would apply it right um so that you don't keep asking yourself why is amaka just asking why is that so why is this so why so why you know um uh, let's finish up with this so amaka just asked me uh, if I would like um, an app that, uh, if I would like to have an app that would uh, uh, age uh, medical appointment booking. And, uh, you know, as the user here, I'm going to say, oh yeah, sure. You know, I would definitely love it if there's an app, right? I would definitely love it if there's an app that, you know, can make me uh, book medical appointments because then I don't really have to, you know, place a call. You know, I, I don't want to be talking to someone all the time. I'm very busy at work and I just want to be able to log into this app, uh, you know, place that booking and uh, you know have them receive that booking right so um, and of course there are some features i would want to have feature a feature b i would want the app to function this way and that way um these things are important that you you, you should you know also take them down don't try to uh, don't try to add or you know uh, how, how would i put it now when someone start talking about features you know you might be tempted to say oh okay the app would actually have this to have that please don't do that right don't do that just listen to them okay and sure you are listening. You know, they are going to say, we would have the app to have feature A, feature B, feature C. You know, you just keep saying, oh, okay, okay, that's nice, okay, all right, noted, you know, just ensure you, you don't, um, because the moment you try to uh, say anything about one of the features that they've mentioned, then you are going to have a long conversation. And trust me, I don't think you're ready for that, okay? So, um, yeah, so I think, I think uh, uh, there's, there's a question that also uh, was not added yet, so Amaka, uh, there's a question that was not added here, like, uh, what are the type of features, right, that you would, yes. you would want this 
up to now. Okay, so I think uh, it was it was a part of the other set of questions that you removed. Uh, but of course, we removed that intentionally because you know we don't we want you to understand that um, you don't have to go in there with a, with a hundred questions, right? But whenever you spot that there's something that is important and is not in your questions that you've uh, you know arranged, you can always put that in. Okay, so sir, what are the kind of uh, and yeah, I think um, I will talk about that uh, after the last question. Amaka, please go ahead. Let's take the, the last question. Okay, so would you like to test the app if it is released? Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, I, I, I am very busy, by the way, but, um, you know, if, uh, if I am free, especially during the weekends, uh, I would definitely, you know, love to just uh, try the app and see uh, if, uh, if it's something I would, I would want to use. Okay, all right. So um, can we reach out to you when this app is ready? Yeah, yeah, fine. I mean, I, uh, especially during the weekends, as I said earlier, due to my schedule, um, you can reach out. Um, yeah, and I, I, I would definitely love to, you know, test it when it's ready. All right. Okay. Okay, then. So that would be all. So thank you so much for having this interview and sparing us some of your time to answer our questions. All right. Uh, you're welcome. So uh, have a wonderful day. Yeah, you too. Okay, so yeah, um, of course, I will definitely agree when you say uh, the interview um, is not going to be this smooth because, you know, myself, I think I am also bringing in some level of, uh, you know, bias to the way I, uh, you know, uh, tackle these questions because this is something I also do uh, every time. Uh, but one thing you must understand is that it's a good idea to add questions like uh, um, what are the kind of features that you would love to have, you know, uh, on the booking app, right? Um, so sometimes the person can then describe, you know, what, what their ideal workflow would look like. You know, I just want to have an app where I can just come, you know, sign in, probably sign in with my Gmail. I don't want to go through the stress of authentication and all that uh, because sometimes it's a bit stressful for me. I don't always remember my password, you know? So when I am on the page, I just want to be able to, you know, have a list of doctors that are close to me and that are also far from me. Um, you know, basically, I don't want to be entering location because that is a bit stressful. I just want uh, something that can, you know, automatically get my location and give me a medical facility close to me, right? I want to be able to uh, add my own private hospital in there so that I can always book that specific hospital and that specific doctor, Um uh, yeah, so people would definitely, I'm, I'm just giving random, uh, you know, uh, uh, random things from my end, but from my head, but people will always, uh, you know, want to own that application, you know, so don't try to have a, a very deep uh, conversation around that. Just, you know, take their, uh, take those uh, decisions and those uh, feedback that they are giving you and, uh, you know, take it down, jot it down. Um, one thing I really wanted to point out is, um, don't refer to people as uh, sir or ma or mr or mrs you know don't do that don't do that at all instead refer to them by their name right um so if uh, on the call you know uh, amaka will not say so mr ma right because i mean you don't know uh, i might uh, it's it's possible you know with the way things are going i might be um uh, identifying as a motorcycle right or i can be identifying as some, <laughs> as, some as something that um you know, uh, I mean, you, 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 can, you, can, you, can, you might call me Mr. Marv and I tell you who told you I'm a mister, right? Uh, of course, I'm not, I'm not going to tell you that. Please don't get me wrong, okay? Um, <laughs> but people are like that. Yeah, people are definitely going to, if you have noticed my platforms, maybe on, the, on the LinkedIn or maybe on Zoom, you might have seen that I appended the, uh, the he, him thing there. You know, it's not really rampant in Nigeria yet, but uh, a lot of people that I have conversations with, especially when I do mentoring or when I used to do mentoring on ATP list, um, at some point, you know, when I started, I was always, uh, you know, uh, the high, high um, uh, Miss this or Mr. this or Mrs. this. Um, uh, yeah, or maybe I'm like, good morning, good afternoon. So you need to understand that uh, some people really don't, um, you know, take it lightly when you call them Mr. and they don't identify as, uh, as a man, right? So, Call them by their name. So Amaka would refer to me as Mav, you know, hi Mav or Marvelous, you know. Uh, she would of course ask me to introduce myself, you know, she would introduce herself, and I would just introduce myself as well. So during that introduction, I would get to know, um, or she would get to know uh, how to address me, right? If I say I am Mr. This, then it's fine. She can proceed with the Mr. If I say I am Mrs. This, 
right? It's fine. She can, because, you know, you need to understand that, of course, in Nigeria, a lot of people don't like it when they don't feel respected as well, especially the elderly ones, right? Uh, if they don't describe themselves as Mr. or Mrs., then please go on with their name, right? Go on with their name. And uh, if they correct you, some people will correct you and they will be like, sorry, I am Dr. This, you know? And ensure you work with the doctor, you know, attach the doctor to their name. Um, yeah, but if they don't correct you and they are fine with it, just proceed with their name. So, um, uh, Mav, uh, was, there, was there a point in time where you had issues, you know, when you tried uh, making uh, some uh, medical uh, appointment booking? Right, and when when I respond, Amaka will be like, "Oh, Mav, yeah. Um, uh, I mean, thanks for that feedback. Thanks for that response. Um, but Mav, you know, but Mav, uh, was there a point where you where you had this issue, or you know, what were the exact pain points? You know, so always refer to the person by their name, uh, especially the first name. Right. Uh, some people are also very annoyed when you call their surname. Right. You know, don't don't mention people's surname. You can always ask." Them. Uh, sir, uh, you can always ask them, Mav, um, are you comfortable if I call you Mav? I mean, are you fine with Mav, right? Um, yeah, it, it, will be, it will be very difficult, right? It's very difficult, especially if it's the first time you are trying to avoid using the Sa or Ma thing, uh, because, um, you know, we are wired, especially as Nigerians, uh, to always add that, uh, you know, to show some kind of respect. Uh, yeah, but um, I remember working with the team, and I think Amaka knows about this experience very well, I was working with a team of um, uh, founders uh, in Estonia, you know, um, women, right? Of course, uh, they identified as women, so I can call them, I can say they are women. Uh, but during, the, during our first conversation, I avoided that, uh, you know, calling them miss or, uh, or referring to them as women, um, you know. So we were building an application or a platform for women in Africa, right? So they brought in the topic, a platform for women in Africa. So at some point, I call them beneficiaries, right? I call those women beneficiaries because they are the ones benefiting from using the application. I tried my best to avoid using women all the time. And um, it's not like there's something wrong with that. I was only trying to be careful because I've also done some research to understand their culture over there, right? Uh, like I remember the first time I asked them, oh, you don't go to church on Sunday because she was chatting me on a Sunday morning. And, uh, you know, she was like, oh, uh, sorry, Mav, I forgot, to, I forgot to tell you, but... but um, you know, I, I'm not a Christian and uh, this is my religion. So um, that was the first time I, I, I had to Google that religion to really understand the religion. So um, you, don't, you don't try to press uh, or to pressure uh, or to force your religion or your culture on other people. You know, you have to hear from them first and uh, try to understand, you know, their personality uh, before referring to them as, um, you know, uh, I mean, try to refer to them as what they would, uh, you know, appreciate uh, on that call so that they won't find it uh, offensive. Uh, and I also remember bringing in engineers to the team from Nigeria and my engineers calling me Mr. Mav. Uh, hello, Mr. Mav. And uh, one of the women were like, Mav, you know, we are never going to call you Mr. Right? And I was like, yeah, it's fine. You don't have to call me Mr. I mean, of course, uh, at the back of my mind, you are paying me. So <laughs> I don't want the Mr. Just pay me and I'm comfortable. All right. So let's, Amaka, Amaka let's look at some of the feedback um, or some of the questions in the chat. Uh, maybe you can take them and I can also take some if you want me to. Okay, all right. So um, someone says, um, what can we do if the person just answers yes or no to everything? Exactly. Yeah, Amaka, please go ahead. <laughs> yeah. I don't even know what to do right now. Uh, maybe you might ask them to throw more light, but then some people just want, they don't want to actually talk much. So they, just, they are just willing to give you yes or no. And even if you ask them to explain, they might end up giving you short sentences, but maybe you can just ask them to shed more light on yes or no, especially if you need more answers to that question. Um, Ma, what do you have to say about this? I think most people that have actually agreed to be with you on a call, uh, I think they actually want to you know, have that conversation with you. Uh, maybe it might be a bad time for them, or um, in most cases, they are not really uh, used to talking to people uh, in settings like that. So they might be tensed as well. I mean, sometimes, you know, the same way you feel tensed, the other person is also tensed, you know, on that call. Uh, so what you can do is um, try to, um, especially especially for the guys, yeah? So if you're a guy interviewing, um, um, yeah, if you're interviewing someone on that call and that person happened to be a woman uh, and, you know, you happen to be a man, um, try as much as possible to soften your tone, right? 
is not um, is not uh, I mean try as much as possible to soften your tone because sometimes people feel um, intimidated, right? And I would always use that word. People feel intimidated, you know. Especially there was this guy, uh, um, you know, on one of our previous sessions, and the day I told him to unmute himself and ask questions, when he asked the question. And I was like, wait, like, I don't understand. Are you trying to intimidate me with your question? Because the voice was so deep. And, uh, you know, I, I was I was like, guy, you really need to be an instructor on some platforms, you know, not my platform, some other platform, but you, you have that voice. So try as much as possible to make sure that that's, uh, you, you balance, um, you know, you, you balance the mood, right? Follow up with the person's mood. Um, maybe that term is not professional. So <clears throat> just, ens <clears throat> just ensure you, 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 you create um, a conducive atmosphere, all right? Create a conducive atmosphere and um, don't, don't try to persuade them too much, but of course you can persuade them based on the feedback. So uh, Amaka, maybe you can ask me, uh, if you ask me, if Amaka asks me a question like, um, have you tried using an app to book your appointment? And I'm like, yes, you know? And that, that does not mean you, you will just stop there. You'll be like, oh, okay, so Mav, um, you know, when, when you tried using this app, what was, what was your experience, right? So ask them those kind of questions that require some uh, explanation, right? Uh, you, are not, you are not always going to ask them yes or no questions, right? So ensure you are asking some questions that require some explanation. The way you place a question would also determine the kind of answer you get, okay? And um, don't always read out the question. If, 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 the, if the way the question is written does not really fit into the conversation, try to make it fit into that conversation. Don't make it look like you are reading, reading it out, you know, like, um, like a journalist, okay? Um, yeah, so I think, uh, I think that answers that question too. Yeah, um, I think um, moving on, let's see. Someone was saying, okay, the face pain point sounds technical. I presume not everyone would understand that. So instead of using pain points, can we use challenges, problems, etc.? Yes, you yeah, can. Yeah. yeah, you can. You can. Yeah, you can. Okay. Okay. So um okay, so you might you might miss residents who want to prove smart. It is best you allow them to not engage in words so that it won't trigger responses. So try and control the interview so that you also manage time. Okay. Yes. I think that was from people. Um, yeah, so I think the feedback that Favor is also dropping here is uh, it, uh, it shows that, uh, you know, you have um, research experience as well or interview experience with some people. So I think this is also uh, nice. So allow them to flow. Um, there are some people, they just want to be the smart ones there, you know, because they feel intimidated already because they feel you are trying to, you know, um, play some kind of uh, intelligent uh, games with them on that call. You know, try to make them understand that, I mean, it's your session. So, you know, I'm happy to collect your feedback, right? Uh, I'm not, I'm not uh, probing you. I'm actually happy to collect your feedback. And I'm not saying you should say it that way to them. Just make sure that that is the uh, feeling that you're giving them, okay? Okay. So um, this question is saying, are we working as a group? Should we tell the interviewers that were for on the call or within the call or specific assignment? So I think um, I already spoke with the PMs about how this should work. You have about five people to interview and you are roughly five on a call. Then depending on the time you have to interview the um, your users. So you can be two on a call. All you have to do is take notes. And at the end of the day, when you're done interviewing everyone, like different people would have to interview different users at the same time because we want you to get to interview as much people as possible. So we don't need five of you on a call. You can be two on a call, that if you have um, a time difference between the users, but if you have like three or four users who are agreed on it at the same time, then you have to split yourself across the users. And that's why you're on this call to understand how you would approach them since you might be the only person on the call or you might be with someone else. But if you're two on the call, you, have to, you both have to introduce yourself to the user you're interviewing so that he knows that he has two people on the call interviewing him. Yeah, very important. And I think, I think uh, Amaka's point is really valid there. You know, uh, I won't even advise having more than two people on a call, right? Because uh, it then looks like, um, like a battlefield. I mean, having two people is fine. Having one person ask the question and the other person listening is also good. You know, at the beginning and the end of the session, the other person can just, um, 
you know, um, introduce your, you can introduce yourself and you can also, you know, uh, appreciate the fact that, um, you know, that person was, the, the, the person you are interviewing was on the call with you. Um, when you have more than two people and you have multiple people throwing the questions, then um, it's uh, the other person, the, the other party um, begins to feel um, sometimes uncomfortable. So, um, yeah, two people is fine on the call, you know, anything more than two, uh, I will not, um, I will not advise. Okay. All right. So, sir, is it compulsory for someone to introduce his or himself to the interview before moving on with the interview? Yes, you would have to. Because how do you talk to someone with, if they don't know who you are? So you have to tell them your name so that at least they can be conversant with your name and trust you to an, at least give you a certain level of trust. Yeah, they just keep a question, Amaka. I think I can see Adebola asked um, uh, if the person says he or um, she has only five minutes to spare um, or even less time. So, yeah, so um, when, when someone says something like that, you know, of course, I mean, you have to respect their time, you know, so ensure that you work uh, within that time frame and then you can pick some of the important questions from the um, getting to know question to the uh, beginning question and also the usability testing questions. Um, and of course, these are the categories we selected because this is the first phase of interview, right? Uh, you don't just interview a user uh, once and you say that's the end of the interview until we launch. You know, um, when you have a prototype, of course, you would want to interview again, right? Uh, this is usability testing questions. Um, so you can always pick one or two uh, questions from there. Try to make sure that um, if the person says he has 10 minutes, then of course the person uh, is expected that the person would not spend so much time trying to answer one question, right? Uh, if the person spends a lot of time trying to answer one question, then you would understand that the person has time, but the person is only trying to be uh, unavailable, right? You know, just to um, just to make you understand that he or she is not jobless or something. You know, people people act that way. You know, try to respect their time, and uh, at the end of the day, you, you might not work with every single feedback, all right? But those people that um, uh, try to prove that they are not available. Uh, you might end up not working with your feedback because you don't have enough data, you know, to work with from their end. So you must understand that and uh, ensure you respect their time. Okay. Um, someone said, mm -hmm. oh, this is serious. Uh, just try to uh, make sure that the interview is engaging. Uh, okay. And uh, Amaka, I think you can continue, please. Okay, I think um, the next question I can see, basically we have more of contributions. So this person is asking, is it interest, okay, is it proper to ask them, can I know how I can, um, how can I address to you, Mr. or Miss? Yes, you can ask them. But then that's, if, well, basically just stick to the names. Because- Yeah, I think, I, th I think you can stick to the names, but I mean, uh, you know, when you say, if you're on a call with a, a, a guy, I mean, to you, if you're on a call with a guy and you know that this person is actually a man, uh, the next thing you would want to do is to say, oh, so hi, um, maybe the person's name is uh, Michael. So hi, Michael, um, are, you, are you okay with, uh, with me addressing you as Michael on this call? You know, so the person would uh, probably say yes. Uh, if they say, oh, no, I would prefer Dr. Michael, you say, oh, that's fine. Thank you very much, Dr. Michael. So, you know, uh, always, always appreciate people, uh, you know, based on the feedback, you know, always use things like, thank you. Oh, that's nice. Oh, that's fine. You know, uh, thanks. And um, yeah, because that would make them more comfortable. Okay. So always, uh, but don't, don't, don't use it too much. Like don't, uh, don't make it extreme. You know, I always tell people use those kind of appreciative words, but don't make it too extreme because when you make, when you take it too extreme, then people tend to understand that you're faking it. Right. And nobody likes, I mean, you don't like people who fake it. Imagine telling you thank you all the time um, when you did not really do anything uh, that I should thank you uh, for. Um, you definitely understand that this guy is just faking this thank you. Maybe he wants something and that, that is why he's just using all those words. So yeah, just, just try to make sure that um, you use those words when the person gives you a feedback or responds to a question or something. All right. Okay, so basically, I think that's all the question we have. All the rest are basically contributions and comments. I don't think there are any other questions we have here. All right, then. Um, if you have any questions, maybe we'll, we'll, you, can, you have like three minutes, so we can just end this session once it's um, 10 minutes past nine. Uh, and of course, uh, someone said, oh, okay. Yeah, some people might also come in to say they prefer to be referred to as professor as well. So um, 
before them prof yeah i think uh, i think that should be all if you have any other questions just go ahead and drop it in the chat oh yeah yeah and um and uh, i was uh, i i made reference uh, to um, using um why uh, why questions right so uh, if there's something that you really want to understand especially when it comes to the app you say okay uh, you ask the person a question like um, um uh let's see yeah so uh, when was the last time you visited the hospital and the person is like ah oh, no i've not been to the hospital in like two years right of course i mean that is something you should be curious about and you should ask oh uh, so uh, sorry sir i mean sorry Marv, or you know uh, based on what the person wants you to call them whether it's sa or ma or you know their name so uh, let's assume we're using the name here so i would say um uh, sorry Marv, uh, is there a reason for that uh, is it is it that uh, uh, do, do you have a reason you know for that uh, why don't you go to the hospitals you know so of course uh, you need to understand that it depends on the kind of uh, interview you're doing right uh, if you're doing an interview for uh, probably an application to buy um to buy, uh, you know, maybe 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 a website or an application uh, for, for people working in the mortuary. I mean, it sounds weird, but that, that was what came to my mind. And you're asking someone, uh, sir, when was the last time you bought a coffin or when was the last time you visited a mortuary? And they are like, oh, they've never, they've never visited a mortuary. And then you are like, why? <laughs> <laughs> you also have to kill your family members. So, so exactly, you have to understand the kind of uh, question you are asking. Okay, so when it comes to the hospital, I think that's also very sensitive. Asking someone why is like you, you are praying for them to fall ill, uh, you right, or to fall sick, sorry. Um, but um, I, I think you need to understand when uh, to use the why question. So for example, uh, please describe your experience with the app and press it, oh, my, the app was, I mean, it was terrible. The next question you might, you might ask is, oh, so, uh, sorry, uh, Marv, why did you say it was terrible? What, you know, what was, what was the problem you had exactly? And the person will start explaining so I tried logging in, uh, it wasn't working. And you are like, oh, why, why, why were you unable to log in? Is it a, a credential thing? Did you forget your password? Uh, and the person will now go for that to say, oh, no, actually the website was, uh, was not functional because other people had the same complaint. Oh, really? Uh, okay, so um, uh, did you, uh, how many people did you ask to uh, try the app? You know, or did you try the app some other time? Uh, you know, those kind of, but don't, don't be too extreme, right? So learn to know, um, it depends on the conversation. Try as much as possible. When you are digging uh, for information, use the why question, right? Why would always give you a response because people would always want to explain and make you understand, you know, from their perspective. Um, leave it to that, you know, allow them to give you their perspective. That's what you need for that kind of session. All right. So I think that that's all I wanted to say. And I, uh, I think that's all from my end. Amaka, you can uh, go ahead. Someone said, uh, um, is it okay to make a suggestion when they don't really know how to reply, right? No, don't. I don't make a suggestion. You know, that's, that's like telling them what to answer. You don't want to tell, uh, that's why we don't advise you to uh, ask questions like, um, uh, have you tried, uh, 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 or maybe asking questions like, what would you prefer to use, uh, you know, uh, when um, um, working with this uh, tool? Is it an app or a website, right? Um, we don't like, I mean, that is a reasonable question, of course, app or website, but we don't like asking uh, questions where we give them options, right? Because uh, sometimes their response might not be uh, uh, within those options, but when you've given people options, they tend to stay within the boundary of those options, okay? So, um, as I said earlier, I'm not really um, an expert when it comes to communication, uh, but um, I think uh, this has worked for me uh, for quite some time. And of course, I'm still, uh, you know, learning how to be uh, a better communicator. Uh, if you think there are some things or some feedback or response I gave that were not, um, uh, or let's assume you're an expert, right? Let's, let's say you're an expert and you think um, you can suggest something, um, go ahead and let us know. You can let us know on Discord because uh, we've already passed the time for this session. So I think that will be all. And Amaka, I will leave the rest um, for you, okay? Okay, all right. Um, I think that basically all. We don't have any other thing we want to talk about. So I think we're done for today's class. And okay.